Every now and again, we all meet that one special person. The king of stupids. The one you might want to call a moron, a halfwit, a dope, or perhaps even an idiot. But their stupidity is so incredibly overpowering that, well, you're just out of words. But what if I told you that you need not be so direct? and that in fact the English language is so rich that there's a ton of ways to call someone stupid. So yeah, in today's video guys, your friend here Dasha is gonna teach you the indirect ways that you can call someone stupid in English. But before we go any further, I'd strongly encourage you to do the smart thing and hit that like button and show your support by subscribing to my channel. The first way you could call someone stupid indirectly is to say that he or she is not the sharpest tool in the shed. And Craig, you saw him, he's not the sharpest tool in the shed. Now, this one, guys, is a classic and very commonly used. You could also say that a person is not the brightest bulb in the box. It basically means the same thing. In short, some tools have sharp edges like saws and razors, which is why the word sharp is applied to tools. However, when we use this word in relation to people, it has another meaning. If you call someone sharp, it means that they're smart and understand things very quickly. So saying someone is not the sharpest tool in the shed is basically saying that someone is not sharp and therefore stupid. For example, you could say my cat Mr. Whiskers is not the sharpest tool in the shed, but he's a sweet little guy, meaning he's cute but stupid. Moving on to the phrase, a few fries short of a Happy Meal. I don't think you need me to tell you that Happy Meals are meant to be just that, happy. That's it? A Happy Meal? But imagine getting a Happy Meal and noticing that a few fries are missing or the fries are missing altogether. It's devastating, heartbreaking, and quite frankly, disappointing. It's just not the same without the fries. And the same goes for a person who's a fry short of a Happy Meal. Think of the head as a Happy Meal and the brain its content, including the fries. If someone's brain is not full, it means that they're not that smart. In other words, they're kind of stupid. So you could say, for example, my colleague Mark is a nice guy, but he's a few fries short of a Happy Meal. Next is calling someone a sandwich short of a picnic. From what my research on Google tells me, this is originally a British expression. The way I like to imagine this idiom is to picture a picnic lay down on the grass on a blanket. I hope it's a picnic, it's never a picnic. Where you've got various snacks like sandwiches. And now let's say that there's not enough sandwiches in this picnic to actually call it a picnic. And the same goes for calling someone a sandwich short of a picnic, meaning they're dumb. So for example, let's say that a friend of yours got lost in the shopping mall for the fifth time in a row. You could say, this is the fifth time she got lost in the shopping mall. She's a sandwich short of a picnic. But don't confuse it with the expression to be the meat in the sandwich. This one means that someone is between two people that are arguing. The expression, the lights are on, but nobody's home. Now, I've actually already mentioned this idiom in this video over here where I talk about hilarious English idioms, which you should totally check out after you're done watching this video. So imagine you see a house in front of you where the lights are switched on, but clearly nobody's home. The people living in the house could have switched off the lights to, I don't know, maybe fend off potential burglars, because otherwise it would be pretty stupid to leave the lights on for no reason whatsoever. Ever. It kind of reminds me of my childhood in Cyprus when some people would leave the lights on their porch just to pretend that someone was home. But everybody basically knew that if the porch lights were on, that meant that nobody was home. But I'm saying all of this to make the following point. If the lights are on and nobody's home, that means that the person's head is empty and they're plain old stupid. Lights are on but nobody's home down there. And if you want to use the phrase in a sentence, you wouldn't say his or her lights are on but nobody's home. You would simply say something like, Rob has no idea what I'm talking about. The lights are on but nobody's home. The phrase as dumb as a doorknob or a doornail. 
Funnily enough, you could also say as deaf as a doorknob. Don't ask me what the English language has against doorknobs. I have no clue. This is a doorknob. <laughs> but the phrase as dumb as a doorknob, like not the sharpest tool in the shed, is also quite a commonly used idiom. And yeah, it just means that someone is dumb. I guess you could say that this is a more direct way of calling someone stupid, as opposed to the other idioms that I mentioned in this video today. But it's certainly a little bit more creative than calling someone a twat. Next up on our list is the phrase, stupid is as stupid does. According to 7ESL.com, the phrase, stupid is as stupid does, is a variation of an older phrase that says, handsome is as handsome does. And it was popularized in the movie Forrest Gump. Stupid is stupid does, Miss Blue. Which I definitely recommend that you guys watch, by the way. What this phrase means is that a person's actions are an indication of a person's level of intelligence or stupidity. So if somebody does something incredibly stupid, like, I don't know, accidentally ordering seven kilos of bananas instead of seven bananas on Sainsbury Online Grocery, my, whoever could have done that? Then you could say, well, stupid is as stupid does. Meaning that if a person takes a stupid action, they're considered stupid. Lucky idiom number seven, as smart as bait. Don't be fooled by this phrase simply because it has the word smart in it. Bait! Duh! Because it's deceiving, especially if you don't know what the word bait means. Bait is the food that you put on a hook that's attached to a fish and rods line or whatever it's called when you're trying to catch a fish, like a worm, for example. And the reason I guess that you call someone as smart as bait is because bait ends up being used when, for example, fishing. The implication here is that you have to be quite dumb to become bait. Moving on to someone's village is missing their idiot. This phrase is just, is just so brilliant in so many ways. Let's face it, nobody wants to be the village idiot. You're the village idiot. But sadly, the concept of a village idiot comes from a time when people with mental illnesses were discriminated against, and quite terribly actually, in a lot of cultures. And so there were cases where villages would have a person in their community that they would consider the village idiot. So if you say that someone's village is missing an idiot, it means that that person you're referring to is the village idiot of some kind of distant village village somewhere out there. The good old phrase, as bright as Alaska in December. Here's a fun fact for you in case you didn't already know. Alaska is situated in the northwestern part of Canada, and because it's located in the northern hemisphere, some parts of Alaska experience very, very long, dark days in winter, and in some cases, polar nights. So if a person is as bright as Alaska in December, the word bright is used ironically, because like I said, Alaska has dark winter days. And if you call someone bright, it means that they're clever or sharp, but someone who's as bright as Alaska in December is far from clever. You're not very bright, are you? <laughs> Moving on to the phrase, the elevator doesn't go all the way to the top floor. Practically speaking, if an elevator doesn't go to the top floor, it's a pretty useless elevator. So when you refer to a person whose elevator doesn't make it to the top, it means that they're stupid. All the way to the top. Oh, the top. As an example, imagine someone in your class is quite dumb. You could turn to your friend and say, gosh, the elevator doesn't go all the way to the top floor, does it? And lastly, yes, as usual, I saved the best for last. The phrase got into the gene pool while the lifeguard wasn't watching. What a gene pool. Look, I'm not saying that it's right to offend people and talk negatively about their intelligence or lack thereof, but this phrase is hilarious. This expression is obviously a pun because a gene pool is not an actual swimming pool and it certainly doesn't have any lifeguards. So what you're essentially saying is that this stupid person that you're talking about accidentally got into the gene pool while the lifeguard wasn't looking, as if stupid people are not supposed to end up in the gene pool. This is so mean. 
You could say something like, Sarah took a fur coat to our trip to Thailand in the summer. She must have gotten into the gene pool while the lifeguard wasn't looking. Which means that Sarah is pretty stupid for taking a fur coat to a warm country like Thailand. And we're done you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, let me know by hitting that like button. Out of curiosity, drop me a comment if you have any fun ways of calling someone stupid in your native language. And make sure to subscribe to my channel for more awesome content. I'll see you when I see you. Bye!